This is CNN Breaking News. I'm Brianna Keeler, live from CNN's Washington headquarters, and we're beginning with breaking news. Daniel Pantaleo, the New York police officer accused of fatally choking Eric Garner, has been fired. This was a decision that was just announced by the New York Police Commissioner, James O'Neill. This was moments ago. This comes, though, after five years, more than five years, after police tried to arrest the 43-year-old father of six for allegedly selling loose cigarettes. A man with family lost his life, and that is an irreversible tragedy. And a hardworking police officer with a family, a man who took this job to do good, to make a difference in his home community, has now lost his chosen career. And that is a different kind of tragedy. In this case, the unintended consequence of Mr. Garner's death must have a consequence of its own. Therefore, I agree with the Deputy Commissioner of Trials legal findings and recommendations it is clear that Daniel Pantaleo can no longer effectively serve as a New York City police officer. CNN Shimon Procupes is following all of the developments, as is our Bryn Gingras, who is there uh, at the uh, there at what was just this press conference that we saw. And Shimon, I think. One of the things is that we were expecting this, where he said that he agreed with this uh, police judge, basically, who recommended that he be fired. But hearing the police commissioner describe his rationale and also what he thought police officers would think about this, it was incredibly insightful. And I think some people are going to take issue with what they heard. Uh, absolutely, people are going to take issue uh, with what with what he heard, and you have to understand uh, the police commissioner here, James O'Neill, is someone who's been a police officer, of, was a police officer for 34 years. He wore the uniform, he patrolled in the streets uh, of the Bronx. He knows this city well. Uh, he has a unique relationship with many of the police officers uh, at the NYPD because he himself was a cop for so many years, and he just went through the through the ranks and became the police commissioner. So what he is doing here is he's talking to really the members of the NYPD uh, as much as this is for us and for the community but he's also very concerned about what the rank and file is going to think of this decision and I know uh, as does Bryn who's been talking to sources and police officers no one uh, on the NYPD uh, the rank and file certainly uh, they're not happy with this decision and he is concerned about what effect that will have uh, on their everyday jobs so so that's what we're seeing here uh, from the police commissioner he talked about his 34 years of service uh, he talked about that he does not take any pleasure right he says I know that many will dis disagree with this decision and that is their right. He's talking to the police officers, uh, the people who serve this city uh, and the people who work for him, for him. And he says, you know, he goes on to say there are absolutely no victors here today, not the Garner family, not the community at large and not the courageous men and women of this police department. So that was, in essence, a big point for him. It was important for him to stand there and take as many questions uh, as we saw. Uh, and it was, you know, Brianna, this was a very, very difficult decision uh, for this police commissioner. I know some might disagree uh, with that. This seems kind of clear cut and should have been an easy decision for him. But certainly, as we saw there from him, uh, he was emotional at times. This was not an easy decision for him. Bryn, I, I wonder if one of the things that got lost in all of this was that, yes, this was about Daniel Pantaleo's behavior in 2014 when he used a prohibited chokehold, but one of the things that we saw from this 46-page decision from this department investigation that recommended he be fired uh, was that this was also about what the officer told investigators, that he actually told internal affairs that he did not use a chokehold. So she said that he was quote untruthful in how he went through this investigation internally. Yeah, Brianna, and that is something that the police commissioner said he took into account all 46 pages of that report. And um, really going even before his decision, the TikTok of the events that happened on that day from the second, from the you know time before uh, this incident even happened in the area of Staten Island to the time when this incident went down, literally almost every you know minute that occurred. And then the fact that he said he watched the video over and over and over again and could specifically specifically point out the fact where it went wrong, where Officer Pantaleo was not in the right, which was, of course, the judge's decision. But I want to echo for you, Brianna, because, you know, I've been in here in the room. I want to echo what Shimon said. I mean, this 
was such a difficult decision. I mean, I can just feel it. You feel it in this room. I mean, he was emotional. Um, I was sitting next to the executive staff here with the NYPD. Some of them had their heads down when he actually said those words that he was going to be terminated. This was a decision the commissioner said that he didn't uh, make within, you know, the last couple of weeks. He said he made it just within the last couple of days, taking into account all that he could, but sticking to the facts, like, of course, any cop has to do, right? So, I mean, this was this was pretty emotional. Not only just for the commissioner, but you can just tell for the department as a whole. All right, you guys, stand by for me, if you will. I want to bring in Cheryl Dorsey to talk about all of this. She brings a, a vast perspective, 20 years in the Los Angeles Police Department before she retired as a sergeant, uh, bringing that to this conversation. What did you think of this decision today, Cheryl? Well, you know, this seems to be the final chapter, but we don't know for sure because we don't know if Pantaleo will be given uh, an opportunity to get hired by another job like Betty Shelby did after she shot and killed Terrence Crutcher and Timothy Loman after he shot and killed Tamir Rice. And so I understand um, the angst that the officers are feeling. You know, I'm a street cop and I know that we want our leaders, our chiefs and commissioners to back us. But Pantaleo made a decision. And but for his refusal to let go of that chokehold, we wouldn't be here. And now that he's been proven and demonstrated to be a liar, it's understandable that he can no longer do that job on NYPD or any other police department. You know, I think, you know, family members of Eric Garner watching that press conference, they aren't going to walk away necessarily feeling good about this because to them, they've lost their loved one and they don't really feel like even someone being fired is enough of a response to the fact that Eric Garner is dead. What do you say to them? Well, listen, I understand. I mean, thankfully, something was done, right? Because there was a refusal to indict, so there's no criminal penalty for this. But there are really, truly no winners. And this is not going to give the family any closure, because while Pantaleo will lose his job, he lives. He gets to go on about his day-to-day -day activities with his family, and they get to enjoy him in their lives, something that the Garner family has forever lost. All right, Cheryl, thank you so much. Cheryl Dorsey with us there.